Hello, uh, we are a team of electrical engineering students from Arizona State University uh, presenting a solution for Florida and m University to develop a solar and storage system on their campus. My name is Tyler. I'm in charge of the energy storage design. Um, I am joined today by my teammates Ramon, Awesome, and Bao. Ramon designed the photovoltaics, Awesome came up with the development plan, and Bao performed distribution analysis. There are several goals to this project. The first is resiliency for five buildings uh, to meet 25% of your annual peak load for two hours. On top of that, um, FAMU is a signatory to a commitment to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. We want to help them with this by building photovoltaic systems while also minimizing costs. Uh, furthermore, we need to comply with building codes, uh, regulations, the semester plan, and all our systems have to be built within the blue highlighted area of campus uh, shown in the picture. So for a financially viable solution, uh, we're contending with a local utility rate of about two and a half cents per kilowatt hour, plus a demand charge of 14.29 per kilowatt. However, um, we're also looking at another rate. Uh, given that FAMU is um, obligated to reach climate neutrality by 2050, uh, this can be achieved by purchasing solar directly from the utility uh, at five cents per kilowatt hour. So if the PV system happens to be um, above normal utility rates, but below five cents, um, there might still be an opportunity cost for not investing. So um, as you probably guessed, uh, the reason we bring this up is because the utility rate is very hard to beat. And we're up against the challenge in Florida, PPAs aren't allowed. Um, as you can see from this uh, re-op analysis summary table on the right, um, it looks like we're gonna lose against the utility rate no matter what. So um, we have competing aims here. Um, we've got a trade-off between economic viability versus carbon offset. How to balance them depends on families' priorities. So instead of us dictating what this trade-off should be, um, we're going to present three different options or tiers. The first is a plan to prioritize economic viability by focusing on resiliency and only adding photovoltaics where it earns money. The second tier adds in more photovoltaics um, on three buildings where it was least expensive to add photovoltaics per kilowatt. Finally, um, we have the full solar tier, which consists of the maximum amount of photovoltaic generation um, from the models that we designed with Aurora software. All right, so <clears throat> um, in our conceptual uh, design, we opted to identify different uh, location and options and compare them against uh, relevant specifications, such as the energy production, uh, the master plan, compliance, uh, shading, uh, uh, available space, um, and uh, around campus in order to place the panels. Uh, we limited our PV uh, arrays to, to buildings, rooftops and car uh, ports as they provided the most uh, benefits. Uh, buildings, uh, roof, they were ideal because of the flatness and minimal shadings and the lack of obstacle, uh, making them cost uh, effective and compliant with uh, FMU's uh, plan. Um, carport, they were chosen for the ability to provide shading and accommodate EV charging station as a future upgrade if, if, if interested, as well as taking advantage of the ample parking space on campus. Um, to select the main components of our PV system, such as panels, inverters, and uh, other Hardwares, uh, we use a, a, a criteria uh, which included you know, high efficiency, durability, and re reliability while targeting a DC to AC ratio of 1.2. Uh, we chose the uh, Sun Power X series on the left um, based on its reputation as a leading uh, 
the manufacturer of solar panels, and, <clears throat> and the Enphase IQ8H micro inverters, also for its specification and compatibility with our system. Uh, this means that each panel will um, operate independently, allowing for a greater energy production, uh, reliability, and system efficiency, as mentioned before. Uh, we, we use a, uh, the uh, SAM and Aurora to uh, database to compile the different uh, type and models and, and determine which equipment was the best for our uh, design. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, using Aurora to model uh, our system, we utilize Google Earth and light scan to create, to create the layout uh, for the rooftop and the carport. Um, with this, we determine the optimal or, or orientation tilt, uh, spacing, uh, and, and the spacing between each panel uh, through the research, testing, and refining of each model. Uh, we also generated a production profile using the weather data and irradiance data, as well as on-site PV generation for each uh, building. Um, the maximum energy production depends on the customer cho uh, chosen tier. Uh, on the slide, we present a tier one design uh, for the Allied Health building to the bottom left and a tier three design uh, for the same building to the bottom right. Uh, and we will cover tiers and energy production in further detail later in this presentation. Next slide. what battery chemistry to use, uh, we made a decision matrix where we rated several factors on a scale of one to 10 of importance and use that to make weights. Um, we evaluated how well each of these different battery chemistry performed on each parameter, uh, multiplied the score by the weights and added together to get a total rating. So in this analysis, um, thermal storage gets the highest score uh, followed by iron flow batteries. So what is thermal storage? Well, it takes energy for the chilled water plant to chill the water, and this energy is a load that can be shifted. Uh, this is exactly what a battery does, but here we're doing it by storing chilled water in an insulated tank. So there's two caveats to this solution. Um, first, um, it only makes sense for the chilled water plant. And second is that for the sake of resiliency, uh, there are other aspects of the load besides chilling the water, such as lighting. So we also have to pair this with batteries, and we're just choosing the industry standard lithium ion. How about iron flow? Um, so this is a new chemistry for flow batteries developed by ESS Incorporated that uses more sustainable materials than traditional batteries. Um, the way it works is it separates out the electrodes from the fluid, storing the fluid in a tank, which can be pumped to the electrodes. It's not very efficient in terms of space. Uh, the batteries are very large for the amount of power they deliver. And another problem is uh, they're great at storing energy, but not at delivering power. So this is where capacitors come in. Uh, they have the opposite problem, where they are great at power instead of energy. So uh, putting them in parallel, combine these problems into a benefit, where we have a system with good power and energy storage. So uh, this also reduces depth mm. of charge. As uh, you can see on the plots on the right, um, the one on the bottom is a lithium ion battery combined with a capacitor. Um, you can see that's much less wear and tear on the battery, which is less of a concern for iron flow, which theoretically can handle unlimited cycles of discharge, but we still think there's an advantage here. Finally, um, there's a couple of buildings that were just too small uh, storage requirement to justify the flow of batteries. So for all our lithium ion batteries, we stuck with the industry standard. Um, so these are uh, Simtech Solar, uh, specifically designed for photovoltaics, um, and they're available in sizes close to the sizes that we desired um, from our previous analysis in REOPT. So uh, we're not going to show all three tiers here, but here's the end result for tier one. 
the desired size we got uh, and the actual size, uh, desired size on the left, actual size on the right uh, from a com combination of batteries that's going to slightly exceed that. So using OpenESS, we simulate the impact on the electrical grid. Here you can see on the left, we have the uh, FMU uh, electrical grid and one light diagram on the right. In the grid map, the red dots are the substations uh, that are nearest to our the, like we, the building we need to investigate, while the green dots are the building themselves. The purple dots are the location of two capacitor banks, which I will explain in a few slides. We have to find the overall power of the system as well as the peak power that would to be able to simulate the system in OpenSS. Um, so here's a spreadsheet with calculation I did. Here we have the uh, snapshot of like uh, a month of the low, the school demand that I given our team was analyzed using Excel and uh, created using MATLAB. Uh, next we have a snapshot of the daily load and um, potential PV productions. Uh, we can replace the entire supply from the electrical grid. Instead, we're shaving off the peak of the demand curve. The next three slides are the results from our system analysis. During the first iteration, we saw under voltage at two locations. So to boost the overall voltage of the system, we have installed two capacitor bank at those locations. And as you can see um, on the next slide, the overall voltage uh, with the capacitor bank have improved. And uh, the next slide, we got to show the uh, simulation result. So I believe that this will be safe because of the control from the grid operator and our PV and battery system control will um, control like where the, the supply to match the demand of the, the school. Uh, the financial analysis was first performed from the perspective of an inv investor using a spreadsheet model provided by NREAL. The, the air gate uh, NPV for the overall design is a negative $400,000. And the internal rate of return of the project may be 7.5%. Uh, uh, this is low, but there are several verification factor. Firstly, it uses some financial incentive to help reduce the tax burden on the investor. Also, the client is a public institution, and so the cash flow are guaranteed over the lifetime of the project. We perform a customer saving analysis with Rio, showing an overall 30 years customer saving of negative $19,975. This is represents a, represents a loss, but it doesn't include the value resilience provided by the battery systems. There are also health and carbon mitigation benefits, and by adopting renewable, they can help meet their carbon neutrality goals. Uh, the development plan was written with consideration to the city of Tallahassee's regulation and codes. Four different code institutions were looked into in this project. They are listed on the slides. Each one of these uh, institutions had a couple of different codes that need to be followed for our uh, photovoltaic system and the battery storage units for all the buildings. Uh, Florida AMU University uh, master plan was also considered during the design of uh, phase of this project. The master plan was uh, of the university can be seen on the slide. Uh, the master plan was used to make sure building are, we are gonna use are not gonna be remodeled or deconstructed in the future. Site condition and potential hazard were also looked into greatly. Uh, this includes the site telegraphy, uh, soil composition, and flood map, and any critical habitat nearby. Uh, flood, uh, flood map was the most important one of these, as it's a, a floodplain on the northland side of the university. Uh, location for both solar panels and battery storage units needed to be chosen with regard to the codes and availability available land. Most of our solar panels were designed to be rooftop uh, or carport mounted. Uh, on the slides, you can see the panel location on the co uh, College of Pharmacy building. Um, for the battery storage unit, uh, we're more challenging as we're using the multiple ESS flow batteries, which measure 40 by eight by nine and a half feet. Also, they, uh, on the slide, you can see one of the battery storage location. The battery units uh, are located between the College of Pharmacy and the Silas Research Facility building, and they'll be used to power both. 
since seven batteries will be used there, we decided to build an enclosure to store them, uh, store them in and protect them from outside elements. An example of what the enclosure might look like is on the top uh, right side of the slide. Lastly, we have the approximate, approximate timeline for the project, which should take around nine months to complete for tier three design. Tier one and two will be will take less time, respectively. To recap things here, um, we're offering Florida and m University a solution to the goals of resiliency, carbon reduction, and financial viability. Those last two are trade-offs, so we propose three different tiers to navigate that trade-off. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Tyler, I'm going to have to cut you okay. off. Apparently, time is up. Feel free to leave your conclusion slide up there, though, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, as we move into the section with the judges' questions.